The next unit of study that we're going to have in Algebra 2 is working with exponential and logarithmic functions. The beginning of this is exploring exponential models. Now an exponential model is anything that can be written in the following form. a times b to the x. Now in this, a acts as our starting value and b is our rate of change. Now we have two different ways that we can model this. We can have growth or decay. A growth model occurs when b is greater than 1. Decay happens when b is less than 1. Sorry, if b is between 0 and 1. If b is 0, you have no change at all. If b is 1, it remains constant because 1 being raised to any power is still going to be 1. So as we work through, this will appear on a graph. For a growth model, it will start low and increase rapidly. For a decay model, it will start high and come down and approach a low value. Now the value that is crossed in the middle, right here, that is A. And as we go through, you can see that this approaches or comes from the x-axis but never actually touches it. That is an asymptote. An asymptote, by definition, is a line that is approached but never reached. And I believe that the word asymptote is a Greek word meaning do not touch. So as you go through, if your graph approaches a line, for instance both these approach the x-axis, but it never reaches it, then that is an asymptote or it has an, what's called an asymptotic relationship. So our first order of business in working with exponential models is being able to identify growth or decay. Here are four different functions that are given. We need to be able to identify whether it's a growth function or a decay function. Once we have that information, where would our starting value be? So for problem number one, y equals 3 times 4 to the x. Because 4 is being raised to the x power and 4 is greater than 1, this shows growth. Now along with that, we identify its growth. The next order of business is where does it start and that is our a value. So we will have on a basic graph it's starting at 0, 3. The reason is, if we were to substitute 0 in for x, 4 to the 0 power is 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. Now next one, y equals 11 times 0 0.75 to the x. 0 0.75 is less than 1, but greater than 0, so this shows decay. And what is our starting value? Our starting value comes from our a value. We will have 0, 11. Important thing to remember in working here is that everything, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Now, a couple that look like investment ideas. f of x equals 200 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the x. So since what's inside of our group is greater than 1, this is 1.05, even though it's not much greater than 1, it is still greater, this shows growth. And where does it start at? It starts at 0, 200. This would be modeled after something similar to if you invest $200 at a 5% rate of return, what would be your value of the investment after a certain amount of time. So you're starting at zero amount of time with a $200 investment. Now, g of x equals 72 times one, the quantity of 1 minus 3 hundredths to the x. If we simplify this group, we get 97 hundredths, which shows decay. And our starting value is going to be 0, 72. 
And this would be something similar to a bacteria being treated. It has a 3% rate of decay, meaning 3% between one time interval and the next will die off. And that's what you're looking for with medicines. So with all these ideas of growth and decay and starting value, it's nice to be able to use them in context. So you make an investment of $500 in a money market account that has a promised return of 6% per year. Write an equation to model the future value of your investment, I, after T years. So start out with our equation, I of T, investment after time equals a times b to the x. Now we're going to change some of these. Our x is actually going to be modeled with a t. And we need to figure out a and b. So i of t equals a is our initial investment. In this case, $500. And then b is our growth or decay. Since we're getting a rate of return, money's coming back to us at 6% per year, we always start with 1 when talking about money, because if you multiply by 1, you get to keep it. In this case, we're adding more money to it, so we get 1 plus 6% is 0 point 0.06. Sorry about that. So adding that together, we get 1.06 to the T. We now have our equation. So out of curiosity, what would be the return on our investment after seven years? So what we're going to do is have 500 times 1.06 to the seventh. Now order of operations tells us that we're going to do exponents before we multiply. So we have to raise 1.06 to the seventh power and then multiply that answer by 500. So 1.06 raised to the seventh power comes back as a very long decimal, but in general, 500 times 1.5036 is where I'm going to round off to. Multiplying this answer by our $500 initial investment gives us $751 and 82 cents at the end of seven years. So by simply taking some money and putting it into the bank account and not touching it for this amount of time, you earn $251, almost 252. The longer you leave it in there, the more it's going to grow because not only are they paying you money back on what you started with, but they're paying you money on what they've already paid you. So. Exponential models, growth and decay, can go rather quickly. Just need a little bit of time to work with them and get used to the models. Make sure you understand this and are ready to use as we move into exponential and logarithmic functions.